Hey, good morning, folks. I'm meteorologist T.G. Shock in the WHS 11 First Alert Storm Team Weather Center about 810 uh, Eastern Time on this Wednesday morning, a wet, wet groundhog day. And, uh, of course, if you have not been out yet, consider yourself fortunate because uh, it's been a soaker as expected. And uh, that's kind of what we're looking at as we go through the remainder of the day. Um, it's just going to be a steady rain uh, for the most part, and uh, we're not going to catch much of a break at all because as the rain continues, the colder air is going to slowly but surely work its way off to the south and southeast, and eventually by late tonight and into the day tomorrow, that's when we're going to see the transition from the uh, precipitation in the liquid form to in the frozen form in some aspects uh, but the other part of it and the biggest concern is the fact that we've got some freezing rain on the way as well so uh, here's as of again about 8 10 8 15 here's our max HD radar just covered up with rain uh, zooming into the metro area it has not been a fun commute at all this morning um, by any stretch of the imagination. Just a lot of slow traffic out there in the metro because of the steady rain. And again, that's going to continue uh, as we roll through the remainder of the day. All right, jumping ahead to tomorrow, and uh, this is what everyone's concerned with and what we have been watching all week long. Uh, the watches have now been upgraded to warning. So everywhere in purple, which is basically uh, all of the WHAS 11 viewing area with the exception of Adair County in Southern Kentucky and Lawrence Jackson and Jennings County up in uh, Southern Indiana, northern part of our Southern Indiana viewing area along the US 50 corridor. They're under a winter storm warning. I think they're gonna see a little bit more snow, but we are kind of front and center for freezing rain and a little bit of a sleet as well so that's going to be the uh, that's going to be the big thing for tomorrow and again my apologies for not being able to um, do questions answers that kind of thing because um, for whatever reason it is not allowing me to share it to my television page and that is the only one that I have access to and that I can see so I'll get that I'll get that figured out next time since it's been a little while since uh, since I've done one of these anyway getting back to tomorrow this kicks in at 7 a.m. tomorrow morning and goes until 7 a.m. on Friday so it will be a slow transition overnight from northwest to southeast and it'll really be during the day I think from Louisville southward that we go from rain over to freezing rain and some sleet mixed in as well but those are the latest advisories and it's been mm, I think five or six years uh, since there's been kind of a widespread ice storm warning and again it's because of the ice accretion here here's the the bigger broader view of uh, of what's going on and I'm actually going to skip down to my main show because I want to show you guys um, show you guys a little bit closer view of that. So there's the there's the the warnings again. The deeper blue winter storm warnings. The lighter blue winter weather advisories across southern Kentucky. And flooding is going to be also a concern across uh, southern and southeast Kentucky in the mountains because it's going to stay probably mainly in the rain form there and they may end up uh, end up with some problems so as far as the impacts for Thursday when you get that ice falling of course it starts to accumulate or stick to or you get ice accretion as we call it on the trees the power lines and the elevated objects first and obviously the trees and the power lines are of greatest concern because even a half an inch of ice can put a tremendous amount of weight on the trees and the power lines and then that's when we can end up with some problems so 
that's a concern for the day tomorrow, the longer that that goes on. Of course, if we mix some sleet in, that's going to cut down on the freezing rain totals, which is a good thing. But of course, any kind of freezing rain is especially going to make those bridges and overpasses pretty daggone slick. And then some sleet and some snow at the tail end, which I'll show you on Futurecast here in a minute, that would cause the roads to deteriorate a little bit more kind of heading into tomorrow night and into Friday morning. Friday morning's commute probably being a little messy. And we've used this graphic uh, several times over the last couple of days. It just gives you a good visual because a lot of times people get confused between freezing rain and sleet, which one's worse, etc. So what happens when you have freezing rain is you get a very shallow layer of cold air right at the surface. So temperatures are below the freezing mark in a ideal setup for a decent freezing rain or icing event where you pick up a quarter to a half an inch. You have temperatures setting 28, 29 degrees. A few thousand feet above it, you have a warm nose of air which keeps everything in the liquid form. So as the raindrops fall out of the clouds, they literally do not have enough time to refreeze into either a snow crystal or a sleep pellet, which I'll talk about here in a second. So they make it all the way down to the ground in a liquid form and instantly freeze on contact. And that's when you get your glaze of ice and you're skating all over the place. So that's one of the uh, that's one of the bigger issues. Now, sleet, on the other hand, there is enough time for that liquid to refreeze into a solid ice pellet that will bounce off of things. It literally sounds like little pieces of hail that are very, very tiny. And it's tough to drive in, and it can be slick to walk on, but it does not create that glaze of ice that can be very, very problematic. So that's that's the difference between sleet and freezing rain. And there's an important difference, especially when it comes to the trees and the power lines and accumulating the ice on that because you don't get hardly anything or nearly as much of that when you have sleet because that ice pellet's going to kind of bounce off the tree limb or the power line uh, or, or whatever. So... That's just something to keep in mind. All right, looking at our future cast here, starting out later on this afternoon, we're in the 40s right now. We should continue to stay in the 40s, I think, for the better part of the day. We may spike up a couple of degrees, but with that solid shield of rain that we have out there, I don't think much is going to change. So we get into the middle of the night. Southern Indiana is already back in the colder air and the changeover has started with some freezing rain, some sleet, maybe a bit of snow. You get up even north of North Vernon and Seymour and Bedford, that area up toward Indianapolis is mainly going to be a snow event and several inches at that. And then notice as we hit the early to mid morning, basically along and north of the Kentucky Parkways, you see that pink and you notice how temperatures are below freezing. That's when we will be in the freezing rain for, I think, a good bit of the day tomorrow because you see at 3 o'clock that snow line, again, according to this data set, it's trying to work its way close and basically just right along the river. So it may, at that point, potentially be all snow there there'll be a northeast wind that will be trying to pump some colder air in obviously at the surface thus the freezing rain with temperatures below the freezing mark and then a, a little bit deeper in the evening at least this run has things kind of winding down a little bit but then notice how we get some redevelopment during the early part of friday Along and south of the parkways, maybe a bit of a wintry mix, but snow Louisville northward, and that continues into the morning commute. So it's conceivable that we end with a little bit of snow on the tail end of this, and it could be enough to lay down an inch or two, say here in the metro, on top of what could be icy roads anyway. So Friday, 
could be very, very tricky as well, in addition to what we're going to be dealing with tomorrow. And then as we get deeper in the day on Friday, it's just cold and, and, and everything moves out. So as far as the ice accumulation, this is the potential. This is not written, written in stone. This is guidance. This is kind of an estimate, but it's in the ballpark. And you see that sweet spot is basically between Louisville and the Kentucky Parkways. And that's where we could get up to half inch, maybe a little bit more of ice accumulation. And, you know, once you get in that higher range above a half an inch, that's when you can start to, to have some problems. So the suggestion is today's your day to prepare. We've been talking about this the last several days. It's raining all day today. You know, get what you need. Don't plan on going out tomorrow. Obviously, if you, you know, have uh, backup power, of course, if you have a generator, you want to make sure that it is outside and well ventilated. You need to have batteries, that kind of thing, in the event that it does get bad enough to where uh, folks were to lose power. As far as the snow potential, and this is where that little bit catches us on the back end, Notice how it's kind of painting, you know, inch and a half, two inches around Louisville, of course, more up into southern Indiana, kind of on the tail end of this thing. And that, again, could put a little snow on top of the ice accretion that we look to have tomorrow. So this is going to be an impactful event. It's going to be a disruptive event pretty much across the board. Doesn't matter whether you're in Southern Indiana or Southern Kentucky or anywhere in between, uh, it will be impactful. So kind of the timing as far as everything goes, I think we're looking at uh, probably when I say early morning Thursday, that's during the, the, the early morning hours prior to sunrise for Southern Indiana. The central part there in orange, that's about daybreak and through the morning, meaning Louisville, Metro, along the river, and down to the Kentucky Parkways, and then into the early and middle part of the afternoon. That's when the transition should occur. Could be a little earlier, could be a little later, but nevertheless, that's kind of roughly where we are. So as of 825, here's a live look at our UPS Jobs KY Camera Network. Uh, this is the using Coleman Injury Lawyers uh, camera looking at hospital curve. It is wet. It is nasty out. And you see that uh, traffic is moving along okay there, but fairly slowly. Temperatures have backed off. When I came in at before 3 a.m., it was 54 here in Louisville. But with the rain-cooled air, even with a south wind that's going to be a little breezy this afternoon, we're in the mid-40s. And I think it's a case of we may tack on a few degrees, but I think most areas are going to be hanging in the mid-40s as we go through the remainder of the afternoon. So, again, breezy rain could be heavy at times today, but all liquid, no issues today, no issues this evening. It's really later on during the overnight where we get down closer to that freezing mark, which I think will probably be around daybreak here in, in Louisville. And then tomorrow is the nasty day where we have freezing rain, some sleet. When I say falling temperatures, we'll be around freezing at daybreak, and we should back down into the upper 20s, 28, 29, and just kind of hover there for the better part of the day until even colder air comes in and hopefully eventually changes a little bit of this over to snow as it ends. But impactful, so a wet rest of your Groundhog Day, and then the impactful winter weather, which may again last into early Friday. And then the good news for the upcoming weekend, it will be dry and we will get above freezing uh, on Sunday. So that will help melt whatever form a precipitation falls during the day tomorrow. Notice the nine above on Saturday morning. We should clear out and with all the ice or and or snow on the ground, that has a cooling effect under clear skies. So a lot of times our temperatures can, uh, can overachieve, our lows can 
thus dropping it into the single digits. And then we've got a little dry front that will sweep through late Sunday, knock our temperatures back a couple of degrees, and then we will head back um, head back into the, um, let me show you that full, so Wednesday and Thursday is not blocked out. Then we'll ha head back into the 40s next week. So that's uh, about it in a nutshell uh, as we approach 8.30 a.m. on Wednesday, February 2nd, Groundhog Day. Uh, coming up a little bit later on this afternoon, uh, I think either Old and German and or uh, Chief Meteorologist Ben Pine will be on, and you'll want to definitely join in at 6.30, right after the 6.30 newscast this evening, um, Doug Prophet and Chief Meteorologist Ben Pine, they're going to do a Q&A by going to our WHAS 11 Facebook page and our Storm Team page as well, and they'll be answering your questions <laughs> in a way that I was not able to do because for some reason, again, trying to get my television profile hooked up into this system to where I can get the comments and everything like that. Uh, was a little bit of a chore, but at least I wanted to get on and give everybody an update in case you did not catch wake up this morning. So the bottom line is prepare today. Keep it right here. WHS 11, all platforms on air and online. Don't forget to download our app. Also turn on the push alert. So we'll push out news and weather information for you that will be critical as we go into the day tomorrow. And of course, we will keep you posted. But for today, wet weather, groundhog, don't know what he said, but he's wet regardless, uh, probably even up in Pennsylvania. But everybody stay safe if you have to go out this afternoon. And uh, again, everybody have a great day and stay with us here 